Hello there, my name is Jeff Harrison. Today we're going to be looking at an incredible macro written by one of the Russian authors who contributes to the macromonster.com site. I have an icon on my toolbar. I'm just going to launch the macro. And you'll notice that there are what are called, I guess you would call them roll-ups. And what that means is that there are certain areas in the macro that can be hidden or revealed depending on if you want to hide it or see it. And that's pretty unique. I haven't seen that before inside a, a Corel Draw macro. At the top left of the macro, we have an area that will determine our reference point for some of the functions that we'll get into a little bit later on. Uh, another unique thing about the macro is that you can zoom the whole user interface. And this is very interesting because if you have, for an example, uh, a high resolution LCD monitor or a very large CRT, this allows you to uh, make the user interface more readable especially if you have a very fine or a very high screen resolution. Today we're at 800 by 600 pixels, so we want it at the smallest resolution. And um, the third thing that we want to, or another thing that we want to go over here, is that um, I had suggested to the author to, to allow for document units for measurement. And what that means is that if we look up on my uh, toolbar here, I've got millimeters for the moment but I can switch to inches and most of the time actually I'm in Canada we, we still use inches for printing and this kind of thing but a lot of the world uses millimeters the USA would use uh, inches I presume and um, so regardless of what document units you use for your unit of measurement whatever you type into the, us the user interface for the macro will reflect for example this would be two inches if I change it to millimeters, then this would become two millimeters automatically, and that's very, very practical. Let's look at the distribute spacing portion of this macro. I'm going to change the document units back to inches. I'm going to paste in some shapes that I have on my clipboard. You might know that CorelDRAW allows you to distribute shapes with equal spacing between those shapes, but it doesn't allow you to determine how much space you want between those shapes if you know exactly how much you want. So for example, I'm going to select these shapes here. I'm just going to press the E key and they will level out with each other. This is a function that's built into Corel Draw. It's not part of the macro. But what we want to do now is put a quarter inch of white space between these shapes. And I'm going to drag a copy up here just to show you the reference point function of the macro. Right now, the macro has a reference point that is right in the middle. So if I select these shapes, and I'm going to type 0.25, because I'm working in inches right now, there will be a quarter inch of white space inserted between these shapes. Let's see what happens. There we have it. We have a quarter inch of white space between the shapes. And because of our reference point, they spread out from left to right. If we change our reference point to be the left edge, grab the bottom row of shapes, and typed in distribute or press the distribute horizontally button you can see that the red shape didn't move but it still inserted a quarter inch of white space between those shapes all right let's move on and look at the next section of the macro I'm going to close down the distribute spacing portion of the macro you could have all of them open all the time if you like that's totally up to you let's go down to the make guidelines area and there's quite a few options in here for working with guidelines within Corel draw I'm going to zoom in on my red square there using the F2 key and if I select it and go to the guidelines area of the macro, if I left click on make guidelines we can see that it's created guidelines on all outside edges and also through the middle of the shape. Uh, if we go back to the look at the macro here we can see, I'm just going to undo that action by the way, if we go to the macro we can see that we have the option to create guidelines at any point on that shape. So if we didn't want them to go through the middle of the shape we just left click on the area inside there so that it's white and we can make guidelines again and they won't be going through the shape anymore. If we want to add some space around guidelines we can also do that very conveniently by just typing in whatever value you like. We're in working in inches so I'm going to type uh, a quarter inch there so you can see now we have a quarter inch of space around the outside of our square. I'm going to undo that action now I'm going to create a couple of different shapes. I'm just going to give one a little bit different color for the moment. Move them over there. If I select them, you have the choice between putting guidelines around all of the shapes at once. Make this zero again, by the way. 
Or if that's, if that's um, checked, then what you can do is, I'm going to undo that action, by the way, and then if it's checked, it will create guidelines around all of the outside edges. And so you can see the difference between whether or not uh, if all is checked or not, the result. I'm going to undo that action. What happens if we grab these shapes? I'm just going to top align them by pressing the T key and rotate them a little bit. If we create guidelines without this angle of rotation, here's what happens. I'm just going to select those two shapes. You can see how it's drawn guidelines at all of the outside corners of those shapes. But if we have the angle of rotation as part of the calculation there, I'm just going to select all those shapes again. With this checkbox checked, you can see that it's created guidelines along the edges and it's rotated those guidelines uh, along with those shapes. So as you can see, it's, it's a very comprehensive macro for creating guidelines around shapes at any rotation, whether or not to include all the shapes you have selected, and whether or not you want any space between the guidelines and those shapes. Let's have a look at the step and repeat docker. If we look at these uh, indicators here, they don't increase the value that's inside the box. What they do is indicate the direction that the copies will be made in. For example, we have four copies here, and they'll be going to the right of the original. We have six here, and they'll be going downwards. This is the area that we can enter how much spacing between the shapes that we would want. And right now it's set to one. My document is set to inches, so there'll be one inch of space between the copies. I'm going to change that down to 0.25, which is a quarter of an inch. I'm going to hit go. And uh, there, are, there are the copies. We've got a quarter inch of space between them. And uh, that's it. So the next step here is I'm going to paste in another shape here. We do have the option to use clones. And what that means is that if we, we have the master object and we can uh, step and repeat cloned copies of the original. So here's the difference. And if you're not sure what clones are, um, what that means is that you have the ability to click on the master shape and adjust it, and it'll, the others will update automatically. They are connected to that original shape. And so that's what clones are all about. So you even have that possibility here as well. In the Move and Replace section of this macro, we have some very unique options that are not available anywhere else. And if we look at, let's go through them here. We've got uh, the option to account for rotation, uh, account for other transformations such as skewing and also um, scaling, things like that. I'm going to leave all these boxes checked. I'm not going to go through all of them, whether they're uh, checked or unchecked. I'm, by default, I'm going to keep them checked. This 90 degree angle area is just there for your convenience for quickly rotating a shape by a fixed value. Um, so basically what we're doing here is we're going to look at this button right here to start out. And what this will do is if we were to select one shape and select another shape by shift selecting it or just selecting them both at one time, if we left click on this icon, those shapes will simply swap positions. Now that's very handy because uh, to do that any other way takes a little bit of um, cutting and pasting and things like this. And uh, to do it in one shot like that, that's quite handy. So I'm going to undo that. The next row of options here can be maybe a little bit uh, intimidating to look at, the, all of the icons. But all it really means, and we're going to skip this one, by the way. All this one does is force an object to go over top of another object. So it's not nothing too remarkable with that one. But these two here are very interesting. And this button, all it does is that you're, you're telling the macro um, what your master shape is. So let me illustrate that. I'm going to select this blue piece right here, and I'm going to designate to the macro that that's my main shape. It's kind of like uh, the, the logic of masking, masking an area in photo paint, for example. You're just saying, this is the piece that I want you to pay attention to for the moment. And now I'm going to select the other shapes. And now at this time, I have the option to select the other icons here. And what this middle one, or what, what this one does is if I left click on it, it it copies this one and replaces the other instances of that, uh, or whatever I had selected. So it'll, it'll copy this to those locations and scale them as well. 
Um, and to illustrate how powerful that is, if we go down to the next example here, I've just got a, a letter A that I've converted to curves. I have three shapes that are got random rotations and also some random scalings. In fact, I'm also going to squash one in a little bit as well, so it's um, really distorted. So what we're going to do is the same thing again. I'm going to left click on the A, indicate to the macro that that's the shape that I want to be moving and, and putting in these positions, and then I select the shapes over here, and then I say, okay, replace those objects with the one with the A that I'd selected earlier. And you can see that it scaled them and it rotated them and skewed it and everything. So it, uh, it, it accounted for all of those adjustments in, during that process. On the next page of my document, I've created three shapes over here that have power clipped shapes inside them. Now, what's really unique about this macro is that it gives you the opportunity to replace um, the power clipped pieces inside there all at one time, which is pretty powerful. So I'm going to left click on this blue piece, and like we did before, I'm going to indicate to the macro that that's the piece I want to put into the other places. Select those power clips, and then left click on this uh, last button on that row. And it's put that uh, rectangle into those positions without having to manually go into each one of them one at a time to copy and paste it in there and then also position it. So that's pretty powerful stuff. One thing I wanted to mention about the rotation convenience that's inside the macro is that if you've been working with Corel Draw a long time, you probably know that you can select all of those shapes, and if you were to type 90 degrees on the property bar, it would rotate them all as a whole 90 degrees. But if you need to rotate them one at a time 90 degrees, you either have to um, select one, such as that, go to the next one, hit Control R, Control R, Control R, etc., uh, and that can take a long time. Probably a better route, I would say, is to select them all and use the convenience of this macro to rotate them all in place, just like that. Um, just going to undo that. If we wanted to go to any other oddball degree, we can simply choose, say, 15 degrees, rotate them, and you can see how that's so much faster than any other way. The Cut Power Clips portion of the macro has some unique functionality. Just going to zoom in a little bit here. If we look at the left example, I've created a very thick border uh, around a bitmap that I've imported, and it's actually a power clip. So uh, the shape, if I was to control click on that, this is our bitmap inside a power clip. So that border would, would go w along with that shape. But if we want to expand the size of that rectangle, we can left click on here. And by the way, when it's in the white, everything here is white, that means all, all edges will be processed. So it's increased it a quarter of an inch outwards without changing the interior contents of that power clip. If we head on over here and we look at this one, we can add the by content checkbox. And what that'll do is it'll create, um, it expanded it a quarter inch, but it also dug into the power clip and put that around whatever the contents of the power clip were. So it's unusual functionality, but you never know, that might be very handy for your needs. One of my favorite parts of the macro is the relatively simple but very powerful resize shape portion. And what that allows you to do is, if I was to select this blue rectangle in Corel Draw, we can see on the property bar that it is 4 inches wide and 3 inches tall. But if I was to rotate that shape, suddenly we're looking at the size of the bounding box now, which would be the outside edge of everything, not the original size of the shape. So if I was to rotate it to some oddball degree like that, 311.8 degrees, we've got 4.9 inches, etc. However, in our resize shape dialog, it's remembered those transformations. So I can go into here and type 2 inches by 1 inches, or whatever you want, and it will correspond. And uh, if I was to rotate that back to 0, it's two inches by one inches. So it allows you to adjust the size of shapes that are rotated. Very handy.